In the 3rd century AD, a Germanic tribe had reached the Roman frontier. These people were the Goths, and according to legends, they came from South Scandinavia, though this is hardly believable. The oral tradition, tales and songs of the Goths tell that they crossed the sea and settled on the Baltic shores. They waged war upon the native tribes and drove them away. When they became too many, they left in search of a better land. They arrived in Scythia, defeated the native tribes and reached the Black Sea. There is no proof yet of a Scandinavian homeland, but there is evidence of a group of people living in the banks of the Vistla River in the 1st and 2nd century AD. Gothic tombs and rocks were found both at the Vistla and near the Black Sea, set a century apart. They are somewhat distinctive compared to the neighbouring tribes that were settled there, and they prove that emigration from the Goths did take place during that time. According to Tacitus, the Goths of that period had a more autocratic rule compared to other Germanic tribes and were also distinguished by their round seals and short swords. In the way south, the Goths pushed other tribes westward into the Roman Empire. These tribes were those that Marcus Aurelius fought, as we discussed in the relevant video. There were around 12 different Gothic tribes, but the most important and most numerous were the Tervingi and the Grotungi. In the beginning of the 3rd century AD, the Goths had already settled in the shores of the Black Sea and the Danube. As the power of the Goths expanded, the rich Roman provinces started to look very promising. The Sassanid Empire, having overthrown the Parthians, led an invasion on the eastern border of the Roman Empire in 232. Alexander Severus, the Roman Emperor at the time, after defending the border and heading back, was killed by his own troops. In 235, the Roman Empire went into a crisis which would continue until 284. The army had become the main source of power and the soldiers would often kill their own emperor if they were displeased with him. Several emperors were crowned during those years, some were killed in battle against invading tribes, others against usurpers, but most were killed by their troops like Alexander Severus. While other Germanic tribes from the northwest had started to raid the Rhine frontier, the Goths led the first raids on Roman land, plundering the northeast Balkans. The general Dacius was put in charge of the Roman army to drive off the invaders. He then proceeded to overthrow the Emperor Philip and started solidifying his position. More raids occurred, which were more successful this time, as the Goths reached and plundered the city of Philippopolis. Dacius started a counterattack and met the Goths near Abritus. The Roman army was not familiar with the area and they found themselves trapped in a swamp. The Goths surrounded the Romans and defeated them. In this battle, Dacius and his son were killed and Gallus became the emperor. Meanwhile, the Sassanid Empire launched an attack against the Romans. Emperor Valerian went to fight them, but was defeated, captured and killed. While the Roman-Sassanid war was taking place, the Goths, along with other Germanic tribes, raided the south shores of the Black Sea and the Danube, sacking many cities. In 267, a coalition of Goths and other tribes with their newly made ships and boats launched new raids, this time in Greece and West Asia Minor plundering many cities, including Athens, Argos, Sparta and Corinth. An Athenian militia drove the Goths away and pushed them to the north. In their return to their homeland, the Goths met with the Romans and were defeated in battle. Not long after, a second invasion of a larger scale started. The Goths, helped by Roman engineers, manufactured siege engines and using them nearly took the cities of Thessalonica and Cassandria but were driven off by the armies of the Emperor. A huge confrontation took place in September 268 when the Goths met with the Romans at Nisus. They were utterly defeated with a blow so devastating that it would take them many years to fully recover. In the meantime, a plague had struck the Roman Empire, killing thousands, Romans and Goths alike. The majority of the Goths returned home. Some sea raids were attempted in the southeastern islands of the Mediterranean, but with little success. As the 3rd century crisis ended, with Diocletian stabilizing the empire, the Goths were paid off to cease hostilities against the Romans. 
A large part of them served in the Roman army. The Goths expanded in their own homeland and drove off neighboring tribes like the Vandals, the Sarmatians and the Heralds. In the reign of Constantine, a few battles which included the Goths took place. In some of them the Goths supported Constantine against Licinius and in others they fought against the Romans who would send an army because they feared their expansion southwards. By the time of Emperor Constantine, many of the Romans had converted to Christianity. The emperors that followed Constantine were all Christians with the exception of the Emperor Julian. Ulfilus, who was a son of captive Romans but was raised up as a Goth, was a bishop in Antioch. He was sent to spread Christianity to the Goths. He translated the Bible into Gothic and started teaching about the Christian ways. Some Gothic leaders converted right away but it would take a long time for all the Goths to become Christians. Christianity was seen as a way of Romanizing the Gothic tribes. Some Gothic leaders wanted that, but others saw it as an indirect threat to the tribe, so a certain resistance did take place in the beginning. The version of Christianity that the Goths were converting to was Aryan Christianity, the one which in a few years would be branded as heretic when all the Romans adopted the Nicene dogma. This would be one of the factors that distinguished the Goths from the Romans. In 365, Procopius rose against the new Eastern Emperor Valens with a fraction of the Roman army and 3,000 Goths. Valens defeated and killed Procopius. He then led two punitive expeditions against the Goths. The first one was a failure as the Goths retreated to the Carpathian Mountains and the land was emptied when the Roman army arrived. The second one was hardly successful, as a few battles took place in which Valens defeated a fraction of the Goths and one of their leaders, Athanaric. The Goths by now were nearly fully dependent on the Romans with trade and gold, so they sought for peace. Eventually a treaty was made between Athanaric and Valens, so peace ruled once again in the empire.